And it's back to reality. The Chicago Bears, after an exciting two weeks of offensive explosion, score only 13 points in this game and lose to the Vikings by a score of 19 to 13 to drop to 1 in 5 on the season in a game in which quarterback Justin Fields went down with an injury. I'm not sure if it's a serious injury. It very well could be, in which case he might be missing significant time. And what a complete disaster of a game for the Chicago Bears. What's going on, guys? Hope you guys are all doing well. You know, aside from having to watch this terrible, terrible game, you know. But at this point, guys, you know, it it does hurt still. Like, watching the Bears lose still does hurt. But I've still kind of detached myself from this team emotionally after the terrible start that we had. You know, even though I did pick a Bears win this week, okay? So I was expecting the Bears to win this week. In the back of my head, I was thinking this probably had a chance of happening, right? Because the Bears don't have back-to-back -back good performances ever, right? Like, especially in the Eberflus era, the Bears have not won back-to-back -back games ever. We should have known what happened in the last game was not going to be sustained because we are the Chicago Bears, okay? We are a place where quarterbacks go to die, where we cannot figure it out on the offensive side of the football. And man, in the one game of the season, okay, in which the defense absolutely balled out from beginning to end, which props to the defense, man, I'll talk about them later, obviously, but the defense just was on fire the entire day, getting turnovers, getting stop after stop after stop, giving our offense so many chances to turn this thing around. But on that day, the defense finally shows up. The offense completely wets the bed. We cannot have both sides of the ball playing well at the same time for some freaking reason. And... At this point, man, I don't know what to say about this cursed team anymore, okay? It's clear that 2023 is a wash. Like, we're not going to be making the playoffs or making any sort of playoff run this year. Probably not, right? We're 1-5 in five now at this point. And even though the Lions last year made a run at 1-5, in five, that team's success seemed a lot different than what this team is doing right now, okay? Because even the Lions last year at 1-5 in five were having back-to-back-to-back-to-back offensive explosions, you know, basically every single game. But the Chicago Bears offense this year, they've had a couple good games, but... For the most part, it's been mostly bad, right? And the defense also has only had one good game up to this point. So are we going to be the worst team in football this year? Probably not because the Panthers absolutely suck ass. I mean, they're the worst team clearly right now. There's some other bad teams too that might be worse than the Bears. But this Bears team still, guys, is not worth believing in for this year. And it's such a shame because I actually had a little bit of optimism after the last game. But I should have known this terrible fucking team would have completely stomped it out the very following week and let's talk about the offense guys let's talk about Justin Fields first of all okay obviously the story that everybody's going to be talking about debating for the next week first off obviously I hope he is healthy okay if you're a Chicago Bears fan even if you don't like Justin Fields and you are happy about him getting hurt go fuck yourself okay and get out of my comment section too because that's a that's a terrible mindset to have. You're a terrible human being. You should not be rooting for the injury of anybody on our team or any other team in professional sports. I think that's very childish and very stupid. So hopefully Justin Fields is fine. Hopefully he doesn't have to miss too many weeks. But a wrist injury in which he seemed to, you know, completely land on it. I'm not sure if that's a broken wrist, a sprained wrist, whatever it is. But that's not good for Justin Fields, obviously, because that's his throwing hand, okay? And if you can't throw properly, you're probably not going to be out there on the football field for the Chicago Bears and that really does suck even if you guys don't like Justin Fields it really does suck that he's injured because now we can't see what we have in this kid okay this season was supposed to be about seeing what we have in Justin Fields seeing if we can take the next step up as a passer as a quarterback to be the Bears long-term quarterback but if he's not on the football field we can't see those things so even though guys I know it's a great story that Tyson Bajant had a couple nice drives and I'll talk about Tyson Bajant next but I know a lot of Bears fans at this point are completely fed up with Justin Fields because in this game, guys, it did seem like he took steps backwards as a passer. He did not sense pressure very well. He missed a couple guys downfield, but you also have to admit, offensive line was not good. Okay, pressure was being allowed the entire first half. And every drive in the first half started out with a big negative play. Okay, either a sack, take in, or a fumble. You know, Deontay Foreman fumbled one time to bring the ball all the way back. We had penalties too on offense. So basically every single first down started with a massive penalty, which put us behind the chains immediately. And we could not find a way to beat that pressure in this game, which I do have to say, you know, some of that blame also goes to Justin Fields, obviously. Okay. This guy still a lot of times does struggle with getting the ball out quickly, sensing pressure in the pocket, moving around the pocket, you know, sometimes stepping up in the pocket. He's not able to do those things as good as other quarterbacks 
in this league can and that turnover also he got the ball out a little bit slowly on that pick even though offensive line guys again a long pressure the entire first half the scheming also in that first half was not good because I felt like especially in the on that interception right like we had um Deontay Foreman I think blocking Daniel Hunter on that play like what are we doing Luke Getzi on that play call in that play design so I 100% agree that Justin Fields does deserve blame for this game he played poorly in that first half but I'm just saying also that the structure around him was also not good okay not good at all and we saw that structure also falter in the second half when Tyson Bajan came in which I'll talk about next and you know Tyson Bajan had two back-breaking turnovers right so not a good day by Fields he only won six for ten for 58 passing yards one interception took four sacks I mean again the lack of pocket awareness definitely is concerning even though I know the offensive line was complete dog shit in this game I mean there are plays where Justin Fields still is not able to sense pressure and maneuver the pocket as well as some other um you know pocket passing quarterbacks in this league can so I don't know man about Justin Fields like I really want to still believe this guy is the future because I've always been a big Justin Fields fan you guys know when we drafted him like I was going crazy and after the last two games I did think that maybe he could still be the Bears long-term franchise quarterback and I still think he has so much talent guys like somewhere else he probably is going to turn this thing around he's going to turn his career around because the Chicago Bears are just that terrible of a franchise but we're running out of time now and especially if he has to miss many weeks now after this game if he has to miss like a month or more like I don't know where we go at this point okay obviously at that point the Bears probably are going to draft a quarterback next year whether I like it or not because that's just how the NFL works okay even though he was screwed over by the Chicago Bears you know if the results are not there if we have a high draft pick they're they're probably going to select a quarterback so you know again prayers go out to fields I hope he's fully healthy He's a tough kid, man. I mean, with, with how much he's had to endure being a Chicago Bear, but I don't know, man. It's not looking good for, for him right now. But talking about Tyson Bajan, guys, man, he had a couple really good drives in this game in which he got the ball out super freaking quick. He maneuvered the pocket, um, sensed pressure pretty well. He, again, his release is lightning fast, guys. So as a pure pocket passer, he definitely did look pretty good in this offense at times. But again, guys, he had back-breaking turnovers. And... Okay, it's his first year starting. He is a rookie quarterback, so obviously we're not expecting him to be perfect by any means. But I have no idea why on that second interception, I mean, the first one was actually a fumble, but on the second turnover, the interception, what was he trying to accomplish on that play? Okay, we, we were succeeding in, you know, slowly moving the ball down the field, taking some chunks here, taking some chunks there. We did not have to get it all at once when we had so much time left on the clock, when it was it was first down at that point. So that was the case of a rookie quarterback just trying to do too much. And his arm strength also is not, he doesn't have a great arm, guys. Like compared to Justin Fields, his deep ball obviously is not going to be anywhere close to Justin Fields because Fields does have that arm strength, that, that accuracy downfield. But in the intermediate to short parts of the game, parts of the field, he definitely was looking really really good there and again getting the ball out quickly knowing where to go immediately and just having a lightning fast release guys so there were some good plays man where he ripped some balls to DJ Moore he ripped some balls to Tyler Scott Tyler Scott had a good second half um Tyler Scott had uh okay he only had 12 receiving yards I could have sworn he had much more but he also had that um pass interference drawn I'm um, in the second half, so that's why I'm thinking he had more. But the offense was moving the ball down the field with him. But again, I would just caution everybody to not overreact too much um, because I just don't want expectations to be too high for this kid and Bears fans to be disappointed when he ends up looking like a rookie quarterback in the next couple of games if he does start the next couple of games. Now, obviously, I'm hoping he proves everybody wrong and he turns out to be a Brock Purdy and just goes berserk the rest of the year because I'm a Chicago Bears fan not just a Justin Fields fan okay so I don't care who the Bears starting quarterback is as long as he plays well as long as we start winning some games but those turnovers guys were not good okay that fumble where you know he put the ball on the ground and ended up being a fumble six and that you know interception at the end on a just random heave down the field where he did not have to do that those also cause the Bears to lose the game right so again I'm seeing a lot of people online saying that Bajan is going to save our franchise relax with that talk okay he had a good couple drives and I'm rooting for this kid I hope the best for him if he does have to start again I will 100% be rooting for him be behind him but be careful not to put too many expectations on an undrafted rookie quarterback but hopefully he plays well the next couple of games if he does have to 
you know, start for the Bears. But I don't know what else to say about this offense, man. Luke Getze had a terrible first half play calling too, predictable with that play calling. But I guess we'll end by talking about our center, Cody White here, because man, Cody White here, get the hell out of my team, okay? I, I don't think I've seen a center play a worse game and almost single-handedly, you know, cause the Bears to lose the game. Obviously, it was not the only reason why we lost, but man, he played a terrible game from beginning to when he got benched, okay? Because every other snap was either a high snap or a low snap, and the blocking was not good either by him. I mean, I, I just, I don't understand how when you practice snapping the ball so often, how are you so bad at doing that when the games actually start? So, Cody White has had the snapping issue back you know, when we had Trubisky even back in the day. This definitely is going to be his last season as a Chicago Bear. I think it should have been a long time ago that we should have got rid of this guy because he's not been playing up to his 2018 Pro Bowl level for a couple years now. So I don't get why Ryan Poles kept him for this year. That was a bad move by Ryan Poles, not investing more in the center position. But yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, we only scored 13 points in this game. The offense looked terrible for the vast majority of the game. It seemed like we had a chance to win the game at the end, but our backup rookie quarterback through a backbreaking pick at the end to lose the game so that's the offensive side of the football and then finally talking about some positives which I cannot believe I'm saying that talking about the Bears defense actually speaking positives about them the Bears defense man was freaking amazing in this game okay from beginning to end and I just cannot give enough props to the Bears defense for how they played in this game okay to only allow one of the best offenses in football, keep in mind, guys, the Vikings, even without Justin Jefferson, I know they were missing their star, superstar weapon, which does make a big difference. But even without him, they still had capable weapons like Jordan Addison, like TJ Hawkinson to allow that offense to only score 13 points in this game. Remember, six came from the fumble, six from the offense. Hats off to all of those guys, okay? The secondary played lights out. The front seven finally got pressure on the quarterback, our two Superstar linebackers finally stepped the hell up. I mean, TJ Edwards has been playing good the entire season, but Tremaine Edmonds finally also made a couple splash plays in this game. He had a fumble recovery on a TJ Edwards um, tipped pass, actually, where TJ Edwards blitz, got pressure on the quarterback, immediately put his hands up, ball, you know, flew up, and I think that was a fumble, so Tremaine Edmonds got the fumble recovery, and I was just so impressed with the pressure the Bears got on the quarterback in this game, okay? We only had two sacks in this game, so... It didn't reflect too much on the stat sheet, but there were plenty of quarterback pressures where Kirk Cousins was forced into making some very bad throws, okay? That fumble was a play in which he had to get rid of the ball because pressure was coming his way and TJ Edwards got his hands on the ball. The other fumble that should have been called a fumble recovery by the Bears, but the refs fucked us over on that one in the first half. That also was a play in which Kirk had to get rid of the football fast because pressure was coming his way. So even though we did not get home, too often, we only got two sacks in this game. You know, hats off to the Bears defense. Okay, the defensive line for actually generating some pressure. Guys like Andrew Billings, guys like Rasheem Green even had a couple pressures. So really, really impressed by their, you know, their play up front. And run defense also was phenomenal today. Okay, we only allowed 46 rushing yards in average at 2.1 yards per carry allowed. That's incredible. Guys like Andrew Billings, you know, guys like even Zach Pickens, the rookie, had a really good play against a run that he made where he moved some guys moving to his right and got the running back down. So I was, again, very impressed by the Bears' defensive line play, which I have not said that at all the last two years, it feels like. So that's definitely a positive. But even the guys in coverage today, the linebackers and the, the secondary they made so many plays on the ball. They were swarming to the ball carrier, like wrapping up around the guy, bringing them down instantly, you know, shooting out of a cannon to, to bring guys down. I mean, I just, I've not seen an inspired defense like this in a long, long time now watching the Chicago Bears. So, man, I, I don't think Ibrafus is a good coach, but he did get these guys ready to play defense in this game, which props to him for doing that. And props to all the Bears players out there too. I mean, Jalen Johnson, for the most part, he had a really good game in coverage. Kyla Gordon also returning back to this team for the first time since week one. I did not call out his name basically at any point in this game, which if, if you are a cornerback and I don't call out your name, that's probably a good thing. So Kyla Gordon, again, you can't know until watching back and looking at the film, but... He probably had a good game, okay, if he did not allow many big plays. And if Kirk Cousins only had, you know, less than 200 passing yards in this game. Jaquan Brisker also had so many plays in which he absolutely knocked the hell 
out of some guys in the open field, you know, really strong physical tacklers. So very, very impressed by the play of the Chicago Bears defense. I mean, all these guys that the Bears acquired in the offseason that we thought were going to have good seasons for the Bears, they're finally coming together as one, getting the chemistry going. And the secondary returning back to full health obviously plays a big role in that because having backups and rookies starting in the secondary usually is not a recipe for success. But getting experienced guys back like Jalen Johnson, um, Eddie Jackson, he actually got injured again in this game, which sucks, but he played in the first half. Getting these guys back in the secondary definitely does help a lot as we saw in this game. But the only problem is it might be too little too late, okay? Because the Bears now are 1-5. in five. And yes, we can still take this defensive success over into next year with probably a new coach. Like these players still could be pretty good next year. We could be building something on defense, you know, with young guys like Kyla Gordon, like Jaquan Brisker. Like, you know, the other guys, TJ Edwards, Tremaine Edmonds are still, you know, relatively young. So they have some good years in front of them as well. So like for this year, it might be too little too late in the future. Maybe it's going to help us have a good defense eventually, maybe eventually a top 10 defense. But with the Bears being one in five right now, like it's just very hard to even be too happy about a good performance by the defense because we still fucking lost the game. So let me know what you guys thought about this game in the comments down below. Now sitting at one in five, we basically have no chance of making the playoffs, okay? I don't think Bears fans even expected a playoff run after how bad the season started, but I was hoping that maybe we could at least, you know, win some games back to back and make it at least a little bit interesting down the stretch. But <laughs> a loss like this, man, makes it really hard to believe in this team at all, especially with our starting quarterback now probably out for at least a few weeks, if not longer. So on the bright side, we do have two top five picks coming in the draft the following year. So there's still something to be optimistic about long term. But with how often this franchise messes it up, like I'm finding it very hard to be optimistic at this point in time. I'm sure like in the future, in like in March, I'm going to be hyped about this team again, about the possibility of draft picks, about the possibility of new coaches, etc. But right now, man, all of that just, just makes me sad because it just makes me realize that this franchise again has messed it up and we have another terrible football team. Leave our comments down below as always, bear down.